see everybody this evening. How's everybody doing? Enjoy the warm weather today? It was good getting out there and stretching your stretching your wings outside. Amen? Amen. Are you happy you're saved? Amen. I'm happy I'm saved. I'm happy I'm alive. Amen? Amen. Let's all stand. Let's turn to number 384. Number 384, we'll sing all three verses of In the Service of the King. Number 384, I'm happy in the service of the King. I am happy in the service of the King. I am happy, oh so happy. I have peace and joy that nothing else can bring. In the service of the King. In the service of the King. Every talent I will bring. I have peace and joy and blessing in the service of the king i am happy in the service of the king i am happy oh so happy through the sunshine and the shadow i can sing in the service of the king in the service of the king every talent i will bring i have peace and joy and blessing in the service of the king i am happy in the service of the king i am happy oh so happy all that i possess to him i gladly bring in the service of the king in the service of the king every talent i will bring i have peace and joy in the service of the King. Amen. 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 It's good to be in the house of God. Amen. Let's open up with a word of prayer. Brother Tony, would you open us up in prayer, please? Amen. You may be seated. Let's go to number 374. 374. Send the light. Send the light, the gospel light. We'll do the first, second, and fourth verse of number 374. There's a call come ringing or the restless wave. Send the light. Send the light. There are souls to rescue. There are souls to save. Send the light. Send the light. Send the light. before we go to our prayer time if you have a prayer request if you would have that ready and uh, we will uh, take up those prayer requests in just a second uh, ladies don't forget this uh, Sunday evening we'll resume your uh, ensemble practice at 5 p.m. if you want to be a part of the ladies ensemble they're going we're going to be uh, preparing for Mother's Day so we're excited uh, about a, another special song that they're going to be doing and that'll be in the uh, during the spring program um, also um, um, uh, the, a, after church, you'll notice on the usher station, 
there's a stack of uh, eight and a half by 11 pieces of paper, and they're all stapled. They're not all of them stapled together, but they're stapled in groups. It is the, uh, a copy of the church bylaws, and uh, the deacons and I, we went through them, and we have them ready for, uh, for the folks to take home. Please take home a copy and file it, read it, um, but they're there for you. So just want to make sure that you're aware of that. Also, um, whenever you go out, uh, don't forget to pick up your quiz. That's because we finished the last lesson, all right? So that's your quiz. And it is not, it is not, you can't fail Wednesday night Bible study. You won't, you won't flunk. Maybe I should flunk everybody, so you have to keep coming back, right? <laughs> that's the one way to build a church. You flunked. <laughs> you, have to, you have to repeat. No, no but uh, it, um, just, uh, it's, it's a quiz. You take it home. It's, it's just the definitions, and then write the verse and turn it in next week or the week after. And, uh, and we're just going to have a little fun with it. And uh, w once, uh, once we have uh, uh, some, some points accumulated, uh, we're going to have uh, an ice cream party here at the church, maybe on a Wednesday night or a Sunday night or something like that. We'll, we'll decide that. But uh, we'll just have some fun. Anyways, so that's on, that's on the um, usher station, so don't forget to, to grab that on your way out. Also, um, Brother Tony and Brother Dakota, could I get your help? If you, if you need, you don't have to take one of these if you don't have anybody in mind, if nobody's come to mind. But if you do want one, if you would raise your hand, this is the, this is the uh, slip of paper for the Friend Day prayer list. And we are collecting names. We will be um, uh, putting it out at the end of the month, April 25th. On that Sunday, it'll be coming out on the Sunday bulletins. And this is just, if somebody comes to mind, put their name on there. And this is to pray for them that they would come sometime during May. And uh, pray that they would come to church. And so if you want one, just uh, raise your hand, and we will get that to you. All right. And don't forget that, uh, that men, we have our men's fellowship uh, trip. Uh, we're going to Greenfield Village, and that will be Friday, May 21st. There's a sign-up sheet on the bulletin board. And uh, the uh, admission is $21, uh, $28 for ages 12 and up. And the seniors for 62 and up is $25.25. And um, we're going to have, uh, have fun there and then lunch afterwards. And uh, we need to register in advance. So if you could, please uh, uh, register so we can let them know the group size that we're, we will be having. Also, ladies, uh, you have your fellowship coming up. Uh, ladies fellowship the uh, time will be from 10 o'clock in the morning till 2 p.m and uh, there's a door prize so make sure that that uh you're here on time and it's gonna be fun uh, miss melissa's got a great uh, uh thing uh, great time planned for for all the ladies so if you could sign up by april 12th and then pay for your tickets by may 20 may 2nd and uh miss bunny has the tickets so if you would see her about that and the ages are for 10 for 10 years old and up the, uh, the meal will be soup and, des and dessert, and we're asking all the ladies if they could bring a fruit or vegetable salad uh, to, to help. You know, uh, be in prayer for Miss Dominguez. We just talked to them today, and they're looking forward to being here, so be in prayer for the Dominguez family, and uh, it's going to be a fun time. You're going to enjoy, enjoy them. Also, uh, you'll be doing a craft and, and some other fun, fun things, so uh, don't, don't, don't forget about that. And like I said before, if if you have somebody else that you would like to invite and, uh, you know, somebody uh, in the area, a family or a friend or, or somebody, uh, uh, feel free to, to invite them and, and uh, let's just have a good time. Amen. And then you see in the bulletin that we have, um, we have our spring program. We have that uh, uh, written out here. The kickoff Sunday on, is on May 2nd. And uh, then we have Mother's Day. We have a gift for every mother. Then we have... Uh, the weekend with Brother Dominguez as our special speaker. Also, May 23rd is Missions Emphasis Day. Be in prayer about what the Lord would have you uh, uh, give towards our missions offering, and uh, be in prayer about uh, the right um, the right need to arise, and uh, and we can we can just have a, a love offering that we give to that missionary and help with that need. Um, also, it's Ad Adopt a Missionary Sunday, so be in be in prayer about. Uh, about adopting a missionary, and then that evening we'll have Braxton Jackson with us. He is a missionary going to India. He'll be uh, speaking for us and also presenting his mission field, and then we have Friend Day coming up. Uh, we have a, a Friend Day on May 30th. So do we have the, uh, the tickets ready or the, the, the handouts, the flyers for the Friend Day, or is that what we're looking at? That's what I'm looking at. Okay, good. All right, so we should have that uh, 
ready, uh, if not Sunday, by next Wednesday, that we can start uh, handing those out to, to our friends, little flyers, just to, to let them know and invite them to come. So also put it on your calendar, June 4th, uh, we're planning to go to a Lugnuts baseball game, and it's going to be a fun time, so uh, sign up on the bulletin board, uh, for your bulletin board, and, uh, and um, is the cost on there that you know of on the sign-up sheet? No? Okay. We'll, we'll uh, give you details about that, um, about the cost. So, amen. So if we go to the back of the, the uh, prayer bulletin, uh, we have some, um, beginning with Brother Bruce Gear, uh, be in prayer for him. He, we had some really encouraging news today that got sent out through the uh, prayer chain, and uh, I'll read the, that to those who uh, might be tuning in or who did not hear. Let me see. All right. Um, Brother Bruce is back in the stroke ward. He is able to lift his left leg off the bed. He sat in a chair by himself. He was able to eat a meal of pureed food today. And they have put feeding, uh, they have put feeding uh, Peg on hold at this time. So praise the Lord for that. Amen. So that's encouraging, encouraging news. Let's keep praying, praying him uh, back, to, back to good health. And praying him um, back to, to our prayer, to, to be with us. Amen? What a challenge. But uh, be in prayer for Brother Gear, and also be in prayer for Brother Sean. Uh, he has uh, got some pain with his shoulder, uh, so be in prayer for him. Pray for Miss Karen Merklinger and the migraines uh, that she's been having. Um, and, you know, just keep her in your prayers and her health issues. Also, be in prayer for baby Capri. We've been praying for her. But uh, she's back at St. Jude Hospital with lung cancer, and she starts chemotherapy. This is a little baby. Uh, Miss, Miss June, you, you're familiar? How old is she? 18 months. Wow. Yes. Wow. Wow. Pray for, pray for mom and dad. Pray for mom and dad. This has got to be tearing their hearts out. You know it's got to be tearing their hearts out. So just be, just be in prayer for, for this little one. Also, um, um, Brother and Mrs. Tompkins, their, their new grandson, Kyle, uh, they, have, they found out that he has been diagnosed with cystic fibrosis, and uh, um, our hearts uh, um, are heavy uh, for, for them, but our, also our hearts are hopeful because we know that they have really good uh, treatments, treatment options, and so uh, just be in prayer for Kyle. Uh, God uh, definitely uh, uh, gifted uh, this baby to, to uh, Adam and Crystal Tompkins. And uh, God's got God's special plans. So we'll be in prayer for him. Amen. And then uh, Rachel Davis, uh, this is uh, Pastor Don and Kim, Kim Letson's daughter. She has major neck surgery tomorrow morning. So if we would, if you, if you could remember her in prayer. All right. So if anybody else has any other request at this time, uh, if you would just raise your hand and we can jot those down. And uh, we have some prayer to Miss Jennifer. So that's Miss Jennifer Mitchell's neighbor. She broke um, something in her hip area. So if you would just be in, in prayer. Kay, what's the last? Palmer. Her name is Kay Palmer. So if uh, you would just uh, keep her in your prayers. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Just Miss Toller. Robert Murillo. Yeah. He just had a kidney transplant. So we'll be in prayer for Robert Murillo. Uh, he is um, a missionary down in Guadalajara. He has uh, two, two children's homes or one with two buildings. Um, and uh, he does a great job with the children there. Um, he is in the hospital with COVID. Um, and uh, he, just, he just got through a through a uh, kidney transplant uh, recently, so be in prayer for him. Uh, interesting um, connection that him and I have. Uh, when I was in language school in, in Mexico, he had a bus route in San Juan de Dios, and 
a place called Marroquin. And uh, I, I was asked to work the same area. I didn't know it was his bus route, his prior bus route, but it was work in the same areas. And this, these places, if I ever talk about um, really poor places without any asphalt, not even, not even roads like this, this is, this is beautiful. These roads are beautiful. The, the Lord put me in Costa Rica, Mexico, and all these places to get me ready for this area. <laughs> these are great roads. <laughs> oh, that's great. In Costa Rica, seriously, the asphalt, you're, you're back and forth just trying to stay on asphalt and not pothole your, pothole your car. But, uh, but these, uh, this river rock, they, I mean, these large river rock, you would, it was a, we had a Toyota Previa. You know, there's the space mobiles that Toyota used to put out, the little egg-shaped looking cars. Well, that's what we took to, to Mexico, and uh, it's a seven-passenger van, and we put 21 people in that seven-passenger van on, his, on that bus route. Hey, Amen. <laughs> the large ones on the bottom, mediums in the middle, small ones on top. Three, three levels. It was fun. But um, Brother Murillo, he, he, was, uh, he, he uh, uh, went before me in that area. And it was neat to, to be able to work in, in that same area. The people there just are, are uh, so, so down to earth and very kind hearted. So be in prayer for Brother Robert Murillo. Thanks, thanks for mentioning that. Brother Tompkins. Peg, PG, okay, okay, okay. All right. So that's uh, Sonia and Peg. They are Brother Tompkins's um, co-workers. So uh, Sonia has been uh, voicing her need to find the meaning in life, and uh, Peg also not saying those things, but she's uh, he's asking prayer for her. So. Um, uh, so put that on our list, and we'll pray for her. Anybody else? Yes. for that. All right. Anybody else? Yes, sir. All right. Her name is Shelly Osborne. Shelly is uh, our sister-in-law, and she's expecting a little one, and she's had a couple of miscarriages in the past. They already have a little one. Um, how old is Ivy? Two, and uh, so um, just pray for pray that uh, God will preserve this little one. So the uh, Grandma, Grandpa Osborne are going to have three grandbabies this year. So September, and then her sister is expecting in when November, and then December. So, wow, it's going to be a busy fall for for them. So, amen. Praise the Lord. Anybody else? All right, so let's take a couple minutes and uh, pray with our spouse or pray where we are. And uh, I'll ask Miss Melissa if she'll play a, a hymn softly, and uh, we'll pray over these requests. <laughs>
Father, thank you so much for this time that you've given us to come together. Thank you so much, Lord, for these requests that we can bring to you, that you invite us to come to you. And Lord, I ask that you would please to take these up and, Lord, according to your perfect will, answer them. Lord, I ask that you please touch Brother Gear's body and raise him up. I pray for this baby Capri, Lord. Lord, be merciful to the family. I pray that you please wrap them in your arms and hold them close. Help them to know that your presence is real and with them. I pray for little Kyle Tompkins that you please give his mom and daddy a hug of assurance and help them to know that uh, you've got this, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you please just give them comfort, give them strength of spirit and heart. Lord, I pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Don't forget that downstairs we have some new Love Your Neighbor bags. and uh, There are plenty for all, so if you want to take a couple and uh, be distributing those, they are ready to go, and uh, we will continue to be a blessing to our, to our community. Amen. All right, let's turn in our hymn books to number 356. Number 356, I Must Tell Jesus. I love this song. It's, it's a message from the heart. I must tell Jesus all of my trials. I cannot bear these burdens alone. In my distress, he kindly will help me. He ever loves and cares for his own. I must tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus. I cannot bear my burdens alone. Jesus can help me. Jesus alone. Let's sing the first, second, and fourth verse of number 356, I Must Tell Jesus. tell Jesus all of my trials. I cannot bear these burdens alone. In my distress, He kindly will help me. He ever loves and cares for His own. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus. I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus. Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. Oh, Jesus, all of my troubles. He is a kind, compassionate friend. If I but ask him, he will deliver. Make of my troubles quickly an end. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus. I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus. Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. Oh, how the world to evil allures me. Oh, how my heart is tempted to sin. I must tell Jesus, and he will help me. Over the world of victory to win. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. see any uh, creatures on the way here tonight, any living ones anyway, so, so praise the Lord for that. They'll probably be waiting for me. Um, talking about those roads reminded me of a trip. Uh, Mick Lannis and I had gone up, it seems like we were in West Virginia, I can't remember, it could have been Eastern Kentucky, but um, uh, we went, went to see Everett Jennings, who used to be the um, 
youth director here used to live in a trailer up where your house is. And uh, Everett was quite a character. You go to visit him, he'd take you out in his little 57 Chevy and drive 60 miles an hour around those mountain roads with <laughs> just to see your face. <laughs> But on the way home, Mick and I had the brilliant idea of t not taking the highway home, that we'd take the back roads. But, well, on the map, it looked like they were roads, but, uh, but the, the coal trucks had pulverized the whatever al asphalt was there, so, and that little Chevy Vega, the potholes were bigger than the car, so, yeah. And, and Mick had uh, saw a turtle trying to cross the road, and, and we had just passed a coal truck, and, uh, so I knew it was coming down, and that turtle was fast. But we rescued him, put him in the back of that Vega, and we're going up, and, and I knew that coal truck was coming. It, it almost demolished us. But, but, that, but those potholes, and we decided to take the highway after, after we found it <laughs> up there in those roads. All right, tonight's letter is from uh, Jeremiah and Rachel Smith, and they're on deputation and planning to go to China. And uh, information in this letter is restricted, so it's not supposed to be posted on the internet or any social media. We are excited to share that we have reached 30% of our support. While 2020 would not have been our first choice for starting deputation, God has been actively with us every step of the way. The quarantine definitely interrupted our travel last year in a way we thought for sure would set us back. We have been praying to be finished with deputation in less than three years, so that we could be in China by 2023. I thought that with last year that we would be set back, but it is reassuring to know that we are still on track to finish within that timeline. I cannot thank enough for those of you who have been praying for our family. I hope it is, re I hope it is reassuring to know that your prayers have been effectual. God has provided us uh, for us time and time again, and your prayers have been a huge part of that. Thank you for investing in us uh, in the most important way, and thank you to every believer in church that gives faithfully each month towards our ministry. Our family has been traveling through Kentucky all this month, and we are glad to say that in the last couple of weeks, we have been, we've had three churches take us on for support. We have not factored in their support into our 30% yet, so I am excited to see that percentage go even higher. An unexpected blessing. I did want to share an unconventional blessing from the last couple of weeks. It has been a matter of prayer for us since we started deputation that we would be able to fill our schedule completely with meetings at churches. I was disappointed this past, mo past month when we had a Wednesday evening uh, without a meeting. We made the decision to travel home to Indiana that week instead of finding a place to stay in Kentucky. The Sunday before that Wednesday, my wife began to feel sick and was un unable to attend the evening service. I drove the family home that Monday as my wife suffered in the passenger seat with the flu. Tuesday morning, I came down with the flu as well, and the whole family was quarantined like it was 2020. By that Friday, we were all completely recovered, and we were able to pack up the car again and make it to our next meeting on time. Naturally, we would have love to have vo avoided any of the sickness, but I can't help but chuckle at the thought that God knew we would have to cancel with a church if we had scheduled a meeting during that week. I feel that it was another reminder that God is in control of our future, and he knows better than I do. I warned you this blessing was unconventional, but it was a blessing to me to know that God is still faithfully involved during our deputation. Um, prayer requests. Please continue to pray that God would connect us with the right churches. We have enjoyed so many parts of deputation, and I have prayed that God would use us through what, through what our ministry is right now. As much as we enjoy the fellowship and relationships created with some truly incredible servants of God, we are praying that deputation will be quick so we can dig into the weighty goals of reaching the Chinese people for Christ. Pray with us that our deputation will be expedient and that God will give us wisdom for the steps after. Here for him, uh, Jeremiah and Rachel Smith. And let's pray. Lord, we do thank you for this missionary couple that's just starting out um, and experiencing the blessings of God as they uh, prepare for a future serving you. We ask that you'll continue to bless them. Uh, we thank you for our church. We thank you for praying people. We uh, 
ask that you'll bless the pastor as he brings the lesson tonight. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Let's turn our Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. It's good to be in the house of God. It's good to be uh, preaching the Word of God. It's good to be listening to the preaching of the Word of God. We're going to continue our series on the character of Christ. We uh, started a, a, a month or so ago. We talked about uh, being mighty in spirit and how that the the Lord would like it, wants us to be mighty in spirit rather than the world's philosophy of being mighty in intellect. The world, they, they push, uh, they say knowledge is everything. You know, knowledge, you know, does help you somewhat, but uh, being mighty in spirit, being filled with the Holy Spirit, I believe, is uh, something that's uh, more pleasing to God. Mighty in intellect, we learn that is to judge the truth by the mind, but then mighty in spirit means to judge the truth by the combination of God's spirit bearing witness with our spirit in harmony with the scripture, and that's, uh, that should be our goal. Then uh, we, we looked at the character quality of loyalty, the character quality of loyalty, and we talked about uh, some different characters in the Bible, about uh, how that they were disloyal. We also looked at Mordecai and how that uh, he was loyal, even though his authority, his, the king that he was serving, uh, wasn't deserving of, uh, of having anybody loyal to, loyal to him. But Mordecai, he understood that loyalty is it's, it's a character quality, and and you're loyal because that's just the right thing to do, not because somebody deserves it. Amen? And uh, we talked about how that we ought to be loyal to the Word of God. We ought to be loyal to, to Jesus. We ought to be loyal to our authorities. We ought to be loyal to our church. And we ought to be loyal unto death. And then last week, we just finished up the lesson on truthfulness. And uh, we talked about the honeybee and how that uh, in, in a beehive, it's very important that uh, correct communication be conveyed. And uh, we talked about how that uh, truthfulness has to reign in the beehive or else, uh, for instance, uh, uh, one, of the, one of the scouts, if they convey the wrong information, if they're untruthful in any way and they give the wrong body of movement or if they give the wrong number of circles or however they communicate, then all the other uh, drones, all the other worker bees, all the other forager bees, they're, gonna not, they're gonna, not going to take enough honey uh, or they're going to take too much and they're not going to be able to do their job properly. And then also uh, the, the sweetness of the honey, every, every bee in the hive has to, has to put in their little bit. And if it's off just a little bit, then, it, then it, it, the whole hive moans and, and, and it's like it aches. And how that uh, truthfulness, the, 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 the honey bee in the hive is, is like what uh, a home is and how it, a marriage and a, and a home should be. How that uh, it, it, there ought to be truthfulness. There ought to be uh, uh, elimination of lies, no lies, because it, it causes our spirits to, to groan. And we talk, we talk about how that a lie that is left undestroyed in the home will do two things. It will steal the sweet nectar. That sweet nectar is the spirit of the home. And when lies, when lies are told, it does something that steals the spirit of the home. It's, it's, it's hard. You can't put your finger on it, but it's, it's something that's sensed between everybody in the home. And uh, a lie will do that. And also it will kill the eggs. And the eggs are the future. And, uh, and it's, uh, it's very important for us to be truthful. So uh, with that in mind, um, let's, uh, let's uh, start in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. We'll do a little review on the, the definitions in just a little bit uh, as soon as we get into uh, the, the lesson and read our nature lesson. So we're in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, we'll read verses 1 through 5. 2 Corinthians 10, 1 through 5, it says, now, now I, Paul, beseech myself, beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence am base among you, being absent, but being absent and bold towards you. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that, with that confidence, wherewith I think to be bold against some, which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. For though we walk, in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of, of Christ and having, done, and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you for a uh, night that you've given us. Lord, we thank you for the freedom that you've given us to come to church, gather around your word. I pray, Lord, that you please revive our spirits. I pray that you please draw us closer to you. I pray that you please do a special work here. 
I pray that, uh, Lord, this lesson tonight would be a special lesson, Lord, that you would teach us something from your word, that you would help us to see, Lord, how, how we ought to be, be more and, and, and obey you and, and trust you and, and apply this uh, character quality to our lives. Lord, that we would be the example that not only would we apply it, but that we would teach it, that we would help others to understand how important it is to trust and obey. I pray, Lord, that you please, that you please meet with us this evening. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. I need your help. I pray that you please uh, speak to each one of our hearts. Lord, please do a special work. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So if you have your pen and paper, um, let's go ahead and fill in the blanks for the definition for obedience. The definition of obedience. All right. Obedience. Freedom. First blank is freedom. Freedom. Freedom to be creative. Freedom to be creative. Freedom to be creative under the protection, under the protection of divinely appointed authority. Freedom to be creative under the protection of divinely appointed authority authority all right i'll say it one more time obedience freedom to be creative under the protection of divinely appointed authority let's say it a couple times together and uh, get this uh, definition uh, in our minds ready obedience freedom to be creative under the protection of divinely appointed authority obedience say it again Freedom to be creative under the protection of divinely appointed authority. Let's do it one more time. Obedience. Freedom to be creative under the protection of divinely appointed authority. That's, it's interesting where, that it says freedom to be creative. Creative is going to be another definition, another character quality that we're going to study uh, in, in a coming lesson. But it's, uh, it's freedom to be creative under the protection. In other words, the divinely appointed authority puts up parameters and you're free within those parameters to be creative however creative you want. And when you stay within those parameters, then you're obedient. It's like, it's like a child. Uh, you, the, the kid says, hey, mom and dad, can I go play outside? It's like, yeah, but don't, don't you know, only play in the, in the yard, don't cross the road. So what are the parameters? The yard are the parameters. He can do whatever he wants other than create a nuclear bomb, okay? Yes, sir. I'm, I'm sorry. Maybe ask me afterwards, and um, that, that way I can understand your question. Okay, so um, so as a, as a parent, you are you are giving this uh, this person under you under your authority. You're giving them parameters, and like the, the parent tells the child, don't don't do such and such. But if they cross those lines, then they are then they're becoming they're being disobedient. And uh, but but anything within those parameters of your of the divinely appointed authority, like a, like a parent, like God, a God given authority, one that God would give you. Uh, one that uh, would be put put over you. Um, you have that freedom. You have that freedom as long as you're in those parameters. Amen. All right. So let's read about the grizzly bear. Read about the grizzly bear, and then uh, we will fill in our blanks there at the bottom on the verse. All right. High in the wooded foothills, three bear cubs wrestled playfully with each other. They were having a blast, chasing each other and thoroughly enjoying the beautiful day. All of a sudden, one of the cubs got a smell of something really interesting. He wondered what it was. His curiosity drove him to find out. He bounded off following the curious but oh-so-delicious smell. What was it? He just had to find out. And as he took off, his cub brothers went along to, to for some fun. They were, they were curious as well. The smell took them all over the woods. The cubs did not think twice about the fact that they had no idea where they were now. Nor did it cross their minds to stay in the protective side of their mother. They were having fun. And that was what a bear's life was all about. As they continued, the smell grew stronger until they finally came upon a half-buried caribou carcass. How delicious smelling it was. 
Little did they know that they had just stumbled upon a very dangerous situation. From the surrounding undergrowth sprang four wolves, with their mouths salivating in hopes of a free lunch of tender bear cub meat. In utter surprise, the bears screamed for their mama and tried to run. Their mama bolted to their screams and was defending them in a matter of seconds. She now became a bigger prize for the four wolves to feast on. She managed to put some separation between her, her cubs and the wolves, but one disobedient and naive little cub got, got distracted and began to wander off again. The wolves seized this opportunity to attack this, that lone cub and injure him. Again, the mama bear defended the wolves off and pushed the cubs ahead of her and into an icy stream where she knew the wolves would not follow. The one cub was crying because of his injury. His wound would serve as a reminder that he should have listened to the unspoken wishes of mama and how much it hurt him to disobey. So here we have the verse, casting down imaginations. Imaginations is the first blank. Casting down imaginations. And every high thing that exalteth. Exalteth is the second blank. blank. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge knowledge casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of god and bringing into captivity captivity is the next blank and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of christ to the obedience of christ so i'll say it again casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of god and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So let's turn to the next page. We've got a couple definitions that we can review. All right, let's, uh, what's, uh, let's read the definition and then let's say what the character quality is out loud. Ready? The first one, using difficult times to demonstrate my commitment to God and those whom he has called me to serve. And that is what? Loyalty. All right, so let's say loyalty. Ready? Using difficult times to demonstrate my commitment to God and those whom he has called me to serve. That's loyalty. So when, when we show our true colors during difficult times, God wants us to be loyal. He, God, Jesus is loyal to us when we're going through difficult times. I love that verse in Psalms 23 where it says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. He's very loyal to us. Number two. Earning future trust by accurately reporting past facts, and that is truthfulness. All right, let's say it together. Truthfulness. Earning future trust by accurately reporting past facts. Truthfulness. All right? So number one, characteristics of the grizzly bear. The female grizzly spends a lot of time protecting and teaching her cubs. Teaching her cubs. Because she puts so much effort effort into teaching them she expects them to obey her instructions because she puts so much effort into teaching them she expects them to obey her instructions let her see she is fiercely loyal to her cubs during their training during their training it's amazing how god has given us uh Things in nature, like characters in nature that teach us these character qualities. She's fiercely loyal to her cubs during their training. Letter D, the, mom's, the mama bear's protective dedication, protective dedication is so strong that Proverbs draws attention to it in Proverbs 17, 12, which says, let a bear robbed of her whelps meet a man rather than a fool in his folly. All right, so the word, the, the blank is protective. The, mama's, the mama bear's protective dedication is so strong. Letter E. She teaches her cubs four things. Number one, fear his natural enemies. Fear his natural enemies. And if, if we as parents, as, if we as, as young people, you know, one day you're, I'm talking to, to, the, to the young people who, who are not married or, or maybe you don't have, have children yet. Something that we've got to convey to the, to the younger generation is that there are some natural enemies that, 
that the, our children need to fear. And this, this bear here, this mama bear, that's what she teaches her, her children. And I think that's what God is trying to convey to us. Hey, if, if they do it, if, if the mama bear will do it in nature, how much more should we do it in real life? There are some natural enemies that, uh, that, that are out there to, to do harm to our little ones. And, uh, and one of those you know, would, be, would be Satan, and we need to fear him. We need to respect him. We need to not play with him. Also, uh, those who would, who would uh, go along his, his path and, and who would be a uh, participant in what he, would, what he would like, we need to fear them. Number two, avoid man. Avoid man. She teaches her cubs four things. Fear his natural enemies. Number two, avoid man. Number three, prepare for a long winter's rest. Prepare for a long winter's rest. And number four, proper eating habits. His life, his life depends on his knowledge of when to eat the proper foods, what time of year to eat them, and how much to eat. So she teaches her, teaches her cubs these things. Did you see that the video online of, of this mom with uh, three, th was it three cubs, three or four bear cubs crossing a road? And both sides of traffic were stopped, and they were watching, and these three bear cubs, you know, mama was going across the road, and then a couple of them, they traipsed across the road, and then one was sitting there, and so mom comes back to grab this one. Well, while she comes back, one comes back across, and, and it's this big, this big fiasco. Oh, mercy. But the, the, mama, the mama bear, she, 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 uh, she, she protects her little cubs. Letter F. A cub that does not learn how to prepare for his hibernation period would be forced to wander around looking for food when no food was available in nature. He would risk suffering malnutrition or even death for not learning this skill. For not learning this skill. Letter G. The mama bear maintains constant communication with her cubs. Constant communication with her cubs. I think that's that that is one of the most powerful things that that if, if you have if you have children or if you have grandchildren is is to especially ladies you, there's a there's a way to connect with the spirit of the child the one that's under you and to have that constant communication with your little cubs if you want to call them that your little ones and maybe maybe they're maybe they're uh, young adults or maybe they're they're married and have children but to have that constant communication that's what a mama bear that's what she does. And uh, it, it's, part of, it's part of raising them. It's part of getting them ready for, for, for their, their time, their generation. Number, uh, letter H, the cubs get into a lot of trouble due to their independent spirit and highly inquisitive nose. Due to their independent spirit and highly inquisitive nose. Does that not sound like kids? Ah. They get into a lot of trouble due to their independent spirit and highly inquisitive nose. Letter I, the mama bear spanks her cubs soundly for disobeying her. Can you believe that? Oh, call CPS on the mama bear, right? The mama bear spanks her cubs soundly for disobeying her. Even though she is very watchful over them, many times they receive spankings from nature like the stinging and stinking spray of a skunk or the painful barbed needle of a porcupine. God, God prepared things in nature that would that would teach them hey you need to listen you need to obey but that that's a lesson for us if we observe these things in nature they're given to us for examples and god gave us these things and you know sometimes uh you know we're we're disobedient sometimes we go astray and and it's the barbed needle of a porcupine some pain that comes into our life or or something that that is foul and and horrible smelling that causes us to say you know what uh I need to learn from this. I need to, I need to step back. A porcupine needle could be fatal for, to the cub. J, naturally, the cub does not have any fear for his enemies. Naturally, the cub does not have any fear for his enemies. Mama bear's job, mama bear's job is to instruct them to fear some really dangerous things. She must teach the cub, number one, to have a healthy respect for Papa Bear. To have a healthy respect for Papa Bear. And number two, to fear the wolf, the puma, and especially man. To fear the wolf, puma, and especially man. Letter K. The mama bear can quickly detect danger, can quickly detect danger, and she uses those times to teach her cubs 
to teach her cubs what to do in those situations. In those situations. With that in mind, let's go to 1 Kings chapter 19. 1 Kings chapter 19, we'll read a uh, portion of, the, of, of a story here. 1 Kings chapter 19. First Kings chapter 19, we'll read verses 19 and 20 through 21, and then we'll jump to 2 Kings. All right, so 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 19, it says, So he departed thence and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen before him, and he with the twelve. And Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle upon him, and he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and my, my mother, and then I will follow thee. And he said unto him, Go back again, for what have I done to thee? And he returned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slew them and boiled their flesh with the instruments of the oxen and gave unto the people, and they did eat. Then he arose and went after Elijah and ministered unto him. So let's jump over to Second Kings chapter 2, a few chapters down, Second Kings chapter 2. Second Kings chapter 2, verse 1. Second Kings chapter 2, verse 1, it says, And it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind, that Elijah went from with Elisha from Gilgal. And Elijah said unto Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel, and the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha, and said unto him, Knowest thou that, thy, that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, Yea, I know it. Hold your peace. Hold ye your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Elisha, tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Jericho. Jericho. And he said, As the, the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they came to Jericho. And the sons of the prophets that were at Jericho came to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he answered, Yea, I know it. Hold ye your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Terry, I pray thee here, for the Lord hath sent me to Jordan. And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And they too went on. And fifty men of the sons of the prophets went and stood to view afar off, and they too stood by Jordan. And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters, and they were divided hither and thither, so that they too went over on dry ground. And it came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou seest me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. And it came to pass, as they still went on and, he, and talked, that, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire uh, and horses of fire, and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel, and the horsemen thereof, and he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. He took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he had, when he had, also, and when he had also had smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither, and Elijah, Elisha went over. Letter A. Rain had just fallen after three years of drought in Israel. Rain had just fallen after three years of drought in Israel. Elisha busied himself by plowing in the father's field in preparation to plant a crop. This is back in 1 Kings chapter 19. So rain had fallen after three years, and the second blank is to plant. Letter B. Elijah, the man of God, came, came by while Elisha was working while Elisha was working and cast his mantle upon him. This was not some random act or meaningless gesture. Elijah was, without saying a word, asking 
Elisha to follow him and minister unto him. He was silently asking Elisha to serve God full time by ministering to him. Letter D, Elijah kept walking. Elijah was not going to stop and beg and plead for Elisha to minister to him full time. So I'll start reading back from letter A and make sure everybody has their, has their uh, blanks filled. Rain had just fallen after three years of drought in, is- in Israel. Elisha busied himself by plowing in his father's fields in preparation to plant a crop. Elijah, the man of God, came by while Elisha was working and cast his mantle upon him. This was not some random act or meaningless gesture. Elijah was, without saying a word, asking Elisha to follow him and minister unto him. He was silently asking Elisha to serve God full time by ministering to him. Elijah kept walking. Elisha, Elijah was not going to stop and beg and plead for Elisha to minister to him full time. Letter E. Elijah expected Elisha to make a decision right away. Elisha decided to minister to the man of God. Minister to the man of God. Letter F, Elisha simply asked to say goodbye to his family, and as a sign of how final his decision was, he used the the yoke, plow tools, and oxen for a burnt sacrifice. Remember, this was right after three years of drought. There were not many oxen still alive. His dad's farm had 12 yoke or 12 sets of oxen. Remember, and it says, and he plowed with the 12. So evidently there was one short of 12 yoke, and he was was in the yoke with the 12. He was a worker. This was was after, you could say, this was after a three-year depression in the country. The, The economy wasn't very nice. And he made this life-changing decision during that time frame. All right, so letter G, the, the, now, now after this sacrifice, they were o- there were only 11. He was saying that he was not coming back. He burned his bridges. He was not coming back. Letter H, after years of serving Elijah, his man of God, Elijah knew it was nearing the time of his death. He wanted to give Elisha a test to see if he had reached that third level of obedience. That third level of obedience. Elijah wanted to know Elisha's motive for being such a dedicated servant to him. Was it from the heart or did he have any ulterior motives? Like wanting to start a ministry of his own. If you read 2 Kings 2, 1 through 4... As we just did, letter J, he takes a trip with Elisha through three different cities. In each city, he tells Elisha to stay there until he comes back. Elijah, Elijah refuses. Not, I should say Elisha. Elisha refuses, not out of disrespect, but because he could, he could tell from serving his man of God so long that the order was given more for the accommodation of Elisha. But really, Elijah wanted Elisha's company on that trip. Was he, in it for, was he in it for himself? Was he in it for himself? Letter K, three times he was told to stay, and three times Elisha's motivation for serving Elijah was confirmed. His motivations were proved to be, tr- to be pure, to be pure. Elijah gave Elisha the opportunity to request one thing of him before he was taken. And Elisha responded that he wanted a double portion of his spirit with which to continue his ministry. A double portion of his spirit. Letter M, Elisha had four reasons which could have discouraged him from serving the man of God. Number one, he came from a prominent family. He came from a prominent family. Think about after three years of drought, how many other farms had uh, 11 and a half yoke of oxen? But, th- but his, his dad, his family, they, they had that. So you, know, you, you, had to, you have to think, you know, okay, that, that's, you know, they got some, some money to, to back that up. They've got some, some resources to back that up. But yet he, he, when he was asked to go, when he was asked to, to do something for the Lord, he said, you know what, I'll give this all up. 
I'm going to serve the Lord. He came from a prominent family. Number two, he, he had a good relationship with his family. He had a good relationship with his family. Before he left, he, he wanted, to, he wanted to, to, uh, to dismiss himself from it. He wanted to, to say goodbye to them. Number three, he was sacrificing his position as heir, H-E-I-R, heir to his father's wealth to live the life of a servant. He was sacrificing his position as heir, H-E-I-R, to his father's wealth to live the life of a servant. Number four, he was leaving a secure and peaceful life for a life of danger, disrespect, and physical hardship. He was leaving a secure and peaceful life for a life of of danger, disrespect, and physical hardship. And we, are, we'll, we will uh, conclude this lesson next week and look at, at that, how, how, because of his obedience, because, and, and there's different levels of, of obedience. Uh, there, there are different levels. And, uh, and how God wants us to, to get to that third level. And, and Elisha, uh, he got to that third level and he was blessed because of it. And how that, that ought to be our, our goal as well. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you, Lord, for this time that you've given us to come together. I pray that you please help us, Lord, to, to desire to, to exhibit this, this quality of obedience. Lord, even though, Lord, um, many of us are adults, many of us, uh, Lord, we, we don't have a mother or father over us. But Lord, help us, Lord, to continue to, to show that example. Help us to be obedient unto you. Help us, Lord, to, to, to find out what that third level of obedience is and desire to live that way. I pray, Lord, that you please help us, Lord, to exhibit the, the testimony of Christ in everything that we do so that when we go in and out uh, in our daily lives and we go in and out among the people, Lord, they will know, they will know that there goes a child of God, there goes a Christian, and they will be drawn to Jesus Christ because of us. Lord, I pray this all in Jesus' name. Let's all stand, please. And Miss Melissa is going to play a hymn of invitation. I encourage you to come and use the altar. Ask the Lord to uh, just put your burdens on the altar. Anything that's on your heart, just come and give it to the Lord and ask the Lord to help you to, to exhibit his quality, his character, so that the world will be able to see Christ in you. Let's pray.
Let's grab our hymn books and go to number 322. We'll sing the first and last verse of Living for Jesus. 322, first and last verse of Living for Jesus. Living for Jesus, a life that is true. hope is that the Lord would bless you all uh, in the remainder of your week, that he would keep you safe, and uh, no deer on the road, amen, amen, amen. for everybody, uh, not just Brother Tompkins, but uh, as a, amen, so we hope to see everybody on, on Sunday, don't forget that uh, downstairs we have some Love Your Neighbor bags, and feel free to take as, as many as you uh, believe that you would pass out in, uh, in, your, in your daily life, just be a blessing to people, so Hopefully they're they're blessing. There there are a few I I there are a few with uh, a, the front few have uh, water bottles in them. So just be aware that it's a little heavier than the other ones. But uh but uh, typically I like to have water bottles in them. I just didn't have enough to to spread out. But they can still go out as they are. So so uh, feel free to take it, take whatever you would like. So, Amen. Let's bow for prayer. Um, Brother England, would you dismiss us in prayer, please? <laughs> 